hello and welcome back to trade options like a pro by sensible let's start with our webinar on volatility volatility is the most important part of options trading we start with the shakespearean quote oh no he didn't say that but he did say frailty thy name is woman what do we know so far implied volatility is a measure of uncertainty of fear higher iv means higher option prices usually iv increases when market goes down especially in gaps it usually decreases when market is still moves up or moves slowly it's very high near events and when there is uncertainty so let's say the elections are coming there's a federal open market committee meeting or there is rba policy all the indices become volatile when 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 it comes to single stocks it's obviously the big ones the results iv goes up before events which increases the option prices as we have seen before and iv goes down after an event when the uncertainty is over which decreases option prices implied volatility is the single most important number in options trading a lot of people lose money in option trading because they don't understand iv in fact if you ask me what is the number one reason why beginners lose money in options trading it's simply because they don't understand iv or worse most of them didn't even know that such a thing called iv existed let's look at a common application of iv so by now we know that option selling is just like lottery selling right the seller decides the price of the lottery through iv which means that if there's a higher chance of a lottery hitting the lottery will be priced higher so before events company results etc the ivs will be high which means the option prices will also be high a lot of people end up buying this high iv just before events etc only to end up losing money because once the event is over iv rapidly drops which decreases the price of the options which they bought so what's the lesson look at ivs before you buy near events or better still altogether just don't buy options near the events unless of course you really know what you're doing what else do we know we have learned before that we use vega to measure volatility vega measures change in option price with change in iv if vega is high option price changes quite a lot and if vega is low option prices don't change that much a positive value of vega indicates you gain when volatility increases a negative value indicates that you lose when volatility increases vega is positive for buy options both call and put vega is negative for sell options both call and put vega is very high for at the money options and low for in the money or out of the money options which basically means that if you have bought at the money options when volatility changes your option price will change quite a bit and if your option happens to be in the money very deeply or out of the money very deeply changes in volatility is not really going to change your option price vega is high for long term options and it is low for short term options so let's say that you are at the expiry week your option price won't change much because of change in volatility and if you are having let's say a 2 month option or a 3 month option on an index even 1 percent point change in volatility is going to affect your option price quite a bit so if you want to trade options without really taking vega risk that is the price changing because of change in volatility one of the things you could do is probably think about short term options and not really play with long term options now let's look at three fundamental principles of implied volatility one iv is not the same for every strike two in equities and equity indices like nifty and bank nifty iv is higher for lower strikes and iv is lower for higher strikes what i mean to say is that if nifty is at 10500 a 10300 and 10200 strike will have a higher iv than let's say a 10800 or a 10900 strike there's a reason why i specifically said equities and equity indices here we'll examine that later and finally iv is the same for put and call of the same strike you'll of course see in the market and in a large number of option chains around that they are showing different ivs for puts and calls this happens because of some inaccuracies in pricing the in the money options so let's just examine that point a little deeper so nifty is at 10500 so why do i see ivs that are different for 10200 itm call and 10200 otm put that is because the itm call iv is often wrong because one the itm calls bid offer is wide and sometimes because of bid offer being wide the price could be slightly off from the fair price two when a call option like this one or a put option let's say a 10900 put goes in the money it starts factoring in the stt because of which prices get affected 
so you can't really trust that price so again which one is right and which one should you take to construct an iv chain or an option chain the answer is very simple always go with the otm option this as we mentioned is because of errors in the prices of itm options due to illiquidity and stt so when you are asked what is the volatility of 10 200 strike when nifty is at 10 500 the answer is always the volatility of 10 200 put and not that of 10 200 call so why do you have to understand this iv thing anyway because without knowing ivs it's dangerous to trade options without really knowing ivs you would not have a foundation in option trading and that's like signing up for suicide if you're going to trade option without knowing this stuff and one more very important concept which we have to make very clear at this point is that guessing or predicting iv is impossible a lot of people think that iv is a mathematical formula which you can take out of a calculator that's not really true iv is just like stocks have a mind of their own and they go up and down and if you can guess ivs day in day out you actually can make quite a bit of money so it's exactly like stocks going up and down ivs are an asset class you can trade and guess the direction of so how do we start making intelligent assumptions on iv we first need to understand the foundation of all volatility which is atm volatility atm or at the money option is the option whose strike is closest to the current future price of the same expiry at the money volatility is the volatility of the option whose strike is closest to the current future price of the same expiry so we start with atm volatility and then get the volatility of whichever strike we want which also means that this atm strike keeps changing so one day the atm strike could be 10600 and another day it could be 10700 so when i am asked what's the volatility of atm today and tomorrow i could actually be mentioning the volatility of two different strikes because the strike itself has changed so why did i say that atm is a foundation to answer that let's quickly look at the vol curve the x axis here represents the strikes and the y axis here represents the volatility this slide has four different vol curves taken on four different days the red line represents the volatility curve with one month left to expiry that is the bottommost curve with the least slope the green one is a vol curve with 15 days left to expiry the purple colored one is seven days left to expiry and the light blue colored steepest curve is the one with one day left to expiry so you can say one thing very clearly that as the number of days to expiry decreases the vol curve gets steeper you can notice that i have not represented strikes as 10 600 10 700 etc but i have gone for atm minus 100 atm minus 200 etc this is because atm shifts with change in the value of index so yesterday when nifty was around 10 600 atm was 10 600 and today nifty has moved up 100 points and the new atm strike is 10 700 you can see that the walls are extra high towards both extremes wall comes down towards the middle reaches the lowest point somewhere around the atm slightly towards the right of it and then goes up again the curve gets steeper as we approach expiry let's explore this with an example where atm remains at 10 500 for whatever reason throughout the month so in this example you can see that the 10 500s iv which is a atm iv remains constant pretty much for the whole month but 10000 iv is 16.8 when there was 30 days to expiry 18.3 when it was 15 days to expiry 20.3 with 7 days to expiry and 10000 iv is 33 half with one day to expiry so you can see that the non atm iv shifted just because of the days changing despite the fact that the index practically remains still this means that a non atm iv is not really a good reference because it has that variance across days but the atm iv is as solid as a rock across days so now we know why we use atm as a reference this also means that if you're looking at option chain and seeing huge ivs near some off strike it means nothing atm iv for a month is more or less constant atm strike shifts but atm iv stays ATM IV is range bound in the absence of events and ITMs and OTMs IV swing wildly with strike distance and days to expiry. ATM IV is usually constant within a time horizon. So nifty walls were in 16 to 21% let's say 5 years back. Now it's in a 13ish regime. Fluctuates around 3% up or down normally normally these days. So every time we refer to volatility, we do indeed mean the at the money volatility. 
Now let's try and understand the behavior of ATM IV. When does ATM volatility increase? It increases when there is uncertainty and fear. For indices and for the market in general, this is just before events, let's say FOMC, budget, RBA policy, etc. For single stocks, it's before the results. Also, when market falls, IV increases because of fear, especially when falls in gaps. IV also goes up when there's a large amount of movement in the market, which is big gap ups, big gap downs, whipsaws, etc. The next question then becomes when does it decrease? The obvious answer is when there is reduction in uncertainty and fear. So after an event when uncertainty is over or when the market goes in the opposite direction of fear, ATM IVs drop. Finally, IVs drop when there is reduction in movement, when the market slows down or stays still, etc. Now that we know ATMs, let's answer the question why are OTM IVs so high? The answer is actually quite simple if you think about it. Lottery tickets always have high IV because no one wants to sell them for cheap because there's hardly anything to gain by selling a lottery. So sellers ask for higher premium to compensate the lottery risks. This higher premium is manifested as a higher IV in the price of the option. So the more it becomes a lottery, the higher the IV manifestation comes through. So when you go very deeply OTM or go OTM close to expiry, the chance of a faraway strike going in the money gets lower, which means it becomes more of a lottery. So the seller asks for higher IV and hence the increasing IV graph. Let's put that through an example. So when you are at 10,500 nifty and there's just three days left to expiry, right? 10, 100 strike acts as kind of a lottery because there's 400 points to go there. So since that strike IV, as a put option is going to be sold practically as a lottery, the seller is going to ask for a higher compensation than normal because he has nothing to gain practically and so much to lose. This is why a 10100 IV is usually higher than let's say an ATM 10500 IV. Interesting point to note here is that despite the high IV, there's no significant increase in price. That's because the vega of an OTM is fairly low and when IV increases a lot, the price doesn't increase much. Next we talk about skews. Skew is a very important concept in volatility. There are three concepts here which are key. One, as we mentioned before, not all strikes have the same IV. Two, call and put strikes equidistant from ATM may not have the same volatility. The order of volatility is OTM IV, that of a put, is higher than ATM IV and that ATM IV is higher than OTM IV, which is usually that of a call. Let's explore this. Here's a volatility curve at the beginning of the month. You can see that the volatility is high in the direction of puts that is left. It comes down towards ATM, goes down a bit more and slowly rises. So the lowest IVs are usually one or two strikes above ATM for like a 30 day expiry. There are nuances to that, but let's not get into that for now. You can also see that put IVs are higher than call IVs at the same distance. One last curve for this webinar. This is a skew curve. I've just subtracted the ATM IV from the IVs across the curve so that you can see only the skew or the difference between ATM IV and other strikes as IVs. Now let's go for a practical math situation and see this in a trade. Nifty is at 10,520. Here are the various strike IVs. 10,500 put is 15%, 10,700 OTM call is 13.5%, which as you can see is 1.5% lower than ATM. 10,300 OTM put is at 18%, which is 2% higher than ATM. You bought the 10,300 put and the 10,500 put, and two days later, market goes to 10,300. So what's going to happen? The first thing to realize is that 10300 is the new ATM. IV on this strike used to be 18%, but now it is ATM and ATM IV, as we saw before, is around 15%. But because of the fall in market, the ATM IV has also risen up. So let's say ATM IV has gone up by around 1%, which means the ATM IV is now at 16%. So the 10300 put now is at 16% IV which is ATM IV of 15% plus 1% rise from its original 18%. This is very important to understand. Despite the market falling, you could see that the IV of your strike has gone down because of the shift in ATM. And if you hold very low deep OTM puts which trade at super high IVs, the fall in IV will be drastic when they become at the money options. Now let's see what happened to your call. 10500 is now an OTM call. The IV used to be 13.5% but now it is ATM plus 200 strikes which is typically 1.5% lower than ATM. So now the IV on that strike is 16 minus 1.5 which is 14.5. So why am I illustrating this example? Because the obvious pitfall here is that you could buy a deep OTM put at a very high IV let's say 19 or 20 and then the market actually goes there and 
the options IV will reduce. So the profit you estimate will not be at that high IV of 19 or 20, but because the market has fallen and now that that strike is ATM, the IV at which it will get priced will be the ATM IV which is like 14 or 15. So you will see that the profit you made is not as high as you thought it will be because of this shift in IV. Of course, you will still make money on Delta and hopefully you will not lose too much money on Theta because the fall took a few days. But the important point to realize here is that the IV might change and you might not make as much money as you expected because of this Vega loss. I highly encourage you to try out a few examples where market is shifting up and down and see for yourself what happens to the IV. And that brings us to the close of this slightly longish webinar IV deep dive part one. I'll see you soon in the second part of IV deep dive. Hope this was fun for you. If you like our channel, please subscribe and share it with your friends. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.